lot for being with us. Super excited to talk about Web3 gaming and the metaverse, which is right now a non-word to be used. I know that. Uh, I have my own metaverse. It's the metaverse. Uh, I'm the dean and partner at the Metaverse Academy. I'm a Web3 advisor, and that's also one of the reasons why I created my own metaverse on a hybrid. We talked about it before. Yeah. So Dan was very much into, yeah, there's only this or that, but uh, then there's also something in between. So my one is uh, accessible to all mobile phone, desktop. Uh, I use a platform called Spatial. Some people might be familiar uh, here. I'm advising brands. So for me, it was very important to have something where people can get easily into because not everyone is a Web3 freak. Um, maybe some of you are, but it's not everyone. So since we want to increase adoption and since we want to get to people familiar with that, it's very important. I have three absolutely super guys here. Uh, we talked before upstairs with the green tea from Jan, very special one. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Jan is from Definity, uh, and we have one who actually created a game, which is always the best, and we spontaneously decided that he takes the courage and shows you also what he does in the game. He has a big presentation on Saturday, when you're also there on Saturday, you will see it. So this is not a promo or anything, but this is actually to show you what he does. And we have Christian as well from Inactor. So we have very different, I would say, people, but always one mindset and always one passion. And the passion is Web3, yeah. however you define it. Uh, so let's start maybe with you, if I may. So we have an actual use case, as Ralph was reiterating before, what is the use case? What is the experience? And why did you choose? And I would call your Pulse world is yeah. kind of Amazon uh, in the virtual world because it connects the B2B with the B2C, which is beautiful. And if we call you the new Amazon of music, so let the music play. Okay, so for us, I mean, it all started because we, first of all, we come from traditional businesses. So as I was uh, talking to the guys earlier, uh, we've been in the entertainment and technology industry for over 20 years. Myself, I used to work for a Virgin Megastore um, and uh, I was managing the music division. 2012, we started the first company and the first venture for me was that working with Virgin, I saw a lot of challenges actually, and I wanted to address these challenges. So we started with uh, a company that deals with intellectual property and really facilitates the access to IP for brands and businesses because we feel that music has a really strong impact on businesses. So just to give you guys an idea, now we're you know sitting all here together. So I've, I've done a lot of research on the psychological and social impact of music on people and businesses as well. So one of the things that really intrigued me uh, back in the days was that in 1996, they've done They've done a, uh, a kind of uh, test where they went to a wine cellar in the UK and played four different musical conditions. The first one was they played French music, they played German music, they played pop, and they played classical. So when they played French music, eight out of 10 people bought French wine. When they played German music, seven out of 10 people bought German wine. How terrible. <laughs> well, <laughs> believe it or not, French, but right? they did. So when they played uh, classical music, people spent more money. But when they played pop, there were <clears throat> there was no changes in, in consumers' purchasing behavior. So when you ask the question, first they went to people and said, well, did music have any impact on the decision that you made? And everybody said, of course not. Well, clearly it did, right? So what was very interesting for me was why pop music did not actually have that kind of an impact. And the reason is because it's something that it's very hard for you to affiliate with right because you hear it everywhere you see it on tv you hear it on the radio but when it comes to classical music you know it kind of always reminds you of something that's a little bit posh maybe you know people wearing tuxedos so this is why now i knew that you know music had a big impact uh, on businesses so we started with that first we've built a few technologies uh, we licensed it to brands like nike or jordan you know, a lot of international brands. Then we, we kept on building, right? Because for us, we didn't reach to Web3 just randomly. It was all really about, you know, facing a lot of challenges. So one of the challenges that we faced, hence why I said we deal with IP, is that licensing intellectual property is extremely complex, right? And today we live in a world that's driven by IP. A lot of people don't realize that every time, you know, you, you post a picture, you take a picture, you, you put anything, you're generating IP, right? Yeah. 
and who actually you know monetizes on this ip who does certainly not the creator the big guys <laughs> usually <laughs> you know the big tech companies monetizes on the ip users don't so we started looking okay so we we faced a lot of challenges we feel that you know uh, a lot of brands also started feeling the need of connecting with influencers, connecting with content creators. Yet there's always this, you know, um, a big elephant in the room, which is the complexity of accessing that content. Uh, also, the fact that you know a lot of these creators don't know how to, you know, deal with these brands. So we've built multiple technologies in the past, and uh, we've run multiple DSPs, and we we experienced. Five main challenges, as I mentioned earlier. First was the complexity of intellectual property. Second was also that you have to go and deal with a lot of intermediaries. Third was the current business model, where some of these creators really don't make enough. It's not fair that the current split. Uh, I think we were talking about the thirty percent which Apple takes from Apple. Well, Apple so. takes thirty percent. Record labels take, you know, forty-eight percent. And Roblox <laughs> also know? has a fair share uh, of around. And, yeah, and yeah. a lot of a lot of these, you know, if you if you look, I think. You know, to OTT services, you know, ranging from from Netflix to to the streaming service, you know, and if you consider also as a user, how much do you actually consume out of the subscription that you pay? So to give you an example, um, we we know that advertisement is calculated for CPM, right? So music is calculated similarly. It's it's called the pay per play. So if for every song that's streamed, you actually have a pay per play. Which is it ranges from 0 0.003 to you know 0. Point whatever it depends on the platform. So the way how it works is if you calculate in in advanced markets where people actually listen to a lot of music like India or Mexico or you know China, you would see that probably a user doesn't consume more than 300 songs a month out of that service. So if you consider the cost of the pay per play versus how much you actually pay for that subscription, you'd probably be consuming seven to ten percent of what you're paying for. So where does the money go? You know, because the calculation is always these guys are paid on usage. They're not paid, you know, based on uh, how much, uh, um, you know, they the subscription actually is valued at. So a lot of these issue payment was one of them. Also, people get paid really late. Obviously, I think that everybody here is very, um, you know, aware about, you know, what um, specifically what blockchain can offer when it comes to micro payment. And instant payments is something that's maybe not today, but very soon I think that we'll be able to, you know, see um, uh, blockchains that can actually. And can you tell us also because I think that's one of the one is the device, yeah. which is also mobile clearly, but payments yes. is are uh, is a big big challenge uh, because not yes, everyone wants people... to establish uh, a MetaMask. Now we have also lazy wallets where you can just do it by email. But how do you pay in your world? Mm -hmm. So for us, I mean, our focus, uh, again, look, we, some people start building for us. We look at Web3 or blockchain, whatever you want to call it, you know, as a module, not a business model, right? It's not, it's not the project itself. It's just a module and it's a mean to an end. So what are we focused on? If we talk about music or we talk about games, we focus on emerging markets, high population, young population. Africa is one of them. Africa, 30% of people under 70, uh, sorry, 70% under 30, over 60% under 25 year old. So, but these guys, they cannot afford to pay for subscriptions, right? Why? Because they're cash driven economies in a lot of countries, you know, you have capital control. I come from Africa, you know, you could have a million dollar in your bank account, you can't pay for a Netflix subscription. So what do you do, <laughs> right? We know that mobile payment is really, you know, taking, uh, I mean, there's a lot of mass adoption, but we believe also that DCB is the way to go, which is direct query billing, specifically if you're offering, you know, to people the access or uh, for them to pay for, they're not going to pay, you know, for a hundred dollar, they're going to probably pay one or two dollars. So you can justify, you know, with, with justified with DCB. When I say DCB guys, it's direct carry billing, basically using your mobile credit to pay, you know, for a subscription. And uh, this is the model. So we can And you have 11 also to give a bit of detail, 11 different mobile providers. Well, well right? we, uh, you have to have is, distribution. Yeah. So, so the good thing is we partners. partnered up with, with um, uh, you know, uh, a great company and they're here today. <laughs> uh, this is and he's, he's the founder of the company. Uh, they're they're going welcome. massively in Africa. And what they do, their vast uh, service. So they work with a lot of uh, mobile network operators, ranging from Aredo to you know Orange and everything. And for us, we saw well rather than giving the thirty percent to Apple, maybe you give it to mobile network operators because you know they'll help us with user acquisition, 
And I think um, also specifically in, in emerging markets, I think that's the way to go. Later on, because look, I think that any disruptive technology, uh, if you look at the history, it's never an event, it's a process. It takes time, right? And I look at disruptive technology always or any disruption as a curve, okay? And when you have a curve, you have different reaction. First, some people just try not to listen, not to hear, stick up to their existing model. And we've seen what happened in the past. We, we can take so many examples like Netflix and Blockbuster example, you know. Uh, we can take Virgin Megastore and Spotify or <laughs> HMB, you know, and Tower Records and all these guys. So a lot of guys just want to, you know, they don't want to pay attention and they just want to stick to their business model. Then you have guys who just want to jump on the hype and, you know, today we talk NFTs. Early let's, adapters. Let's get into NFTs. More it's metaverse, let's do metaverse. The day after, you know, and, and keeps on changing. And I think that the right way to take a curve is to take it steady, you know, and then take your time. And I think this is where, you know, you kind of, with every disruptive technology, you have super apps, killer apps, right? I mean, there, were, there was a lot of social media apps before Facebook, but Facebook came and everybody started using, you know, social media. Uh, there were streaming services, also music. The first one was Rhapsody in 2003, but then Spotify came and that was the killer app. And I think we need these killer apps, you know, in, in Web3, we need them in all the different, you know, if, if, if you're talking about uh, decentralized wallets or you're talking about, you know, NFTs. Uh, I have always said, well, NFTs are great, uh, specifically the world we come in, you know, where we come from, IP, you know, media, NFTs present an amazing opportunity. But I think also that so far the staging environment for these NFTs doesn't really make sense. They, they NFTs are usually specifically in the last few years they're for people who use them as assets hoping that they'll increase in value but the real utility is not yet there it's right? not yet there but yes. some of you might have tested a mastercard accelerator program for music and they yep. have artists and you can access within two minutes and again you don't need your own wallet obviously they have custodian wallet yep. so these are already ways or snoop dog i bought the snoop dog yep. pass uh in two minutes i don't need my own i'm testing these kind yes. of things because yes. these kind of big artists like snoop dog is totally yep. into web3 mastercard like amazing yeah uh, and your world will obviously uh drive this adoption but uh, coming back to your world so we have payments you explained basically by yeah. via your mobile phone the credit for us you have mobile is phone, micro games. Just, just, yeah. yeah micro games is uh, also i think very interesting yeah. for us we saw all the big games but at the end what are micro games and why is it attractive well because first of all i mean we really believe in metaverse right and we're here and looking at it from a really long term but we also know that you know and, and we tried we did brand activation we've had over three thousand people you know testing you know with the vr headsets and, and looking at our environment and we've seen what they said you know and we've built accordingly so people when they put it on the first time 95 percent they they have that wow effect they're like wow it looks amazing especially if they see a digital twin uh, and and it looks amazing but then after three minutes, they tell you, well, now I'm here. What do I do? Right? Okay, I'm going to look at this digital twin, but then what afterwards? You need to make sure that in every metaverse environment, you have engagement. You have experiences. Yes, and the discovery. Because for me, this is my personal opinion. I don't know if you guys would agree or not. But if you go into any, why do people go into social media? For me, the way how I see it is they go first because of the discovery experience. So they want to discover what you know the community is about. They want to discover content. Second, it's about engagement, and third, it's about validation. People need that validation. Right? But this is typical gaming. Uh, so if you look at it also from behavioral analysis, obviously yeah. you have this pyramid of what we want, and we all love communities. So yes. we all love to be. We we can live without food, water, but communities are very important. Like we have seen in the two years where we had no one to talk to. I mean. Uh, a few were lucky had a, had a dog or someone but there were so many lonely people and that's yeah. why like my nephew is totally gaming addict since that time because he could actually talk globally to people yeah. he has no people i mean it sounds very sad but that shows you just where we are going uh and that is also something we need to control from a parent point of view yes, yes but we come yeah. to that Jan, how you control your daughters uh, in a second so just maybe also maybe to give you a chance uh, yeah. now to say how how do you get into when you say mobile? How fast is it to get into your world? So remember earlier, we said that it's never an event. It's a process. So for us, you log in, you have a discovery page. The discovery page gives you access to, you know, 
just log into simple game and play right away. You don't have to log in with your avatar and go inside and, you know, maybe you want to play a solo game. Just, you know, we know that micro games actually work, you know, everywhere. And we know to our partners, we have, you know, a few million users that we see, we see the patterns, we see the way how they play. And you need these micro games where people play very fast when they're waiting for, you know, the bus or they're waiting for, you know, the taxi or Uber, whatever. And then when they listen to music, it's the same. You need to give them a similar experience to something that they're used to. But then you introduce them to something different, right? Now you tell them, look, I mean, uh, uh, apart from you being able to access playlists or, or content, like, you know, like the way how others do it, try, use your avatar and get into this world and see how it goes, right? And I think uh, it's, it's like sometimes walking into, you know, your friends are telling you, you should try this, try this, try this, and you don't want to try it. But the minute you do is you get hooked to it. So this is what we're trying to do. And we had this experience again, when I worked for Version, uh, we were a landmark, right? I remember like when people meet anywhere, they say, uh, they go into a mall, where do we meet? We meet in front of Version um, store. Then people walk inside and when they walk, they know Version as a music store. But I know also that the minute they go and go into the music division, then we take them to books, we take them to multimedia, we take them to electronics, we take them to video. You are a platform. Games. That's why I say and Amazon of the yeah. music industry. So we're, yeah, or version, you know, of, uh, yeah, so yeah. that's that's the kind of approach that we have. Maybe, um, can you show us, even though he was uh, not prepared for it this? Was, but no, yeah, but because we have you, obviously you have, you, demo it, on, it's on all good, Saturday. But but I forced him okay. to show. Somebody because needs I to think... allow me to share my screen so I yeah. can uh, so technical work. In the meantime, we have a short glance, Yen, as at, at you and your family life, if I may say so. So he has four daughters, um, mobile users. We have a lot of them, actually, billions. Yeah. And we have 62% are women. Uh, you can't believe it. And the biggest game you said before your daughters play, what, is, what do they love, the four daughters you have? Well, I guess so, so some of them are, are younger and... and uh... But there is like I tell them about games on the computer and just this like same very simple game like uh, twenty forty eight. I mean like uh, even like my young kids can play. Yeah, I guess it sort of shows also how how I think you know like uh, it's very accessible to them that they open up a browser. And there you go, like they can play the game on the internet computer fully like on, on like. It's like not on Amazon. It's really on 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 a blockchain, and uh, they don't need any crypto and, and so on. It's just like a really low entry barrier and uh, if that's uh, why they like to play that game <laughs> a lot it has to be a simple like uh, well you don't have to install a lot, a lot of stuff just the browser is good enough and so that's sort of uh, at, uh, I guess at Divinity what we want to do for the matter is really make sure like everybody can use it very easily low entry barrier you don't have to buy crypto you don't have to do anything really just the browser is good enough so what you game do they play you girls you told me before <laughs> No, no. Candy Crush. No, no, no. That's, no. That, that was my mother. Was talking about Candy Crush. <laughs> you were saying the Candy really... Crush, and we I checked it. Also, yeah. there, fifty-two percent are women. Yeah. So you wouldn't believe it, but mobile game is very dedicated to women. And I know a lot of here are in the gaming space, uh, and we have a few women here only, but a lot of them are actually already in Web three, which is quite great. Um, so, are you ready, Mehdi? Oh uh, yeah, I was just waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Excellent. So we see us. This is totally unplanned, by the way, guys. No, I, I said with all the you know disclaimers, okay. but this is Web3. You know, Web3 is spontaneous. We are all here together. So we haven't probed. It will be a complete failure, but uh, fail and trial. Yeah, and then... this is just a quick demo. I just want to show you something. So one of the things that we've done, yeah. because we have Shall a lot we... of environments you can see yeah. properly on. But you see here, we, we, built, here? we built different metaverse yeah. environments Sit. based on uh, music genres. So I'm going to go to a rock room, for instance, and this is dedicated I love I love for people to, who like rock music, for instance, uh, yeah. and, and they just want to meet people who are like them, you know. Um, okay. You know, usually when you do a demo, everything that can go wrong goes wrong. But I said it. <laughs> I said it will be a failure, so it will be okay. Okay, so here we're fine. I think it's uh, it's just um, the connection. As you guys can see, there's no latency here. So this is Rock Room. Hamdi, can you go to play? Do you want to play a game of pool, Hamdi? Okay. So I can just go example and play, you know, game with... Uh, so we have a lot of games integrated. Some games are multiplayer, some games are not. So they're single player. So I can just go there and invite a user and just play with him. But while we're waiting for Mr. Hamdi to join, 
I'm going to show you something. These are my dance moves. Hold on. I can do that. And it's just I just <laughs> wanted to say, can you please demonstrate here? And Saturday, I think we all expect this. So uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a rock environment. Again, guys, if, if someone wants to try it, maybe, because the connectivity is, yeah. you can just move around and see how it goes. Well, <laughs> I usually I always have to say in my events in the multiverse, the dance yeah, yeah, is the uh, yeah, biggest part. Music, yeah. uh, the... People love party and yeah, people can, love that. Uh, stream Social. music, different playlists, different content. Uh, are you... Okay, we will show you. Um... Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. great. It's fantastic. You can play beer pong as well. You see on the right side, actually, oh, the, the screen is much better. So that's interesting. I don't know why it changes, but it doesn't matter. So yes, on I Saturday, think... we have a really, okay. really good promo. So just, I'll show you a few few more environments quickly. Yes, please. Okay. So, oh, playing games. Okay. So this is... <laughs> This is uh, country music. Right. That's soccer, shoot him up. <laughs> These are the things that we're talking about. You know, people play like stuff like this on mobile very fast. So we have multiple games and we keep on integrating more and more as uh, time goes by. And, and can you download the game? The thing is, what you don't want to do, you do what you can, you know, with a bunch of music, a uh, bunch of games, and then uh, you have to look into every game separately and this and that. Now, everything is just into one environment, so you don't have to do that. But you're accessing these games. Sorry. You're accessing these games now um, with an avatar, but then you have a shortcut. So the shortcut would be just click like an icon of a game and just play directly. And to her question, if I want to let the music play, yeah. what do I do? So the Spotify of yes, of so, Elseworld. So we have virtual. a lot of interactive objects. For instance, to stream music, I will do the demo on uh, Saturday. You go to the DJ click and you have a bunch of playlists. You can interact with objects or you just have a traditional, you know, playlist like image. You click on it, list of contents, something very similar to the way how it's done today. Okay, thanks a lot. A uh, big applause right. for taking uh, taking the chance <laughs> and in particular being so brave. I know it's terrible if someone like me jumps on you, but it's okay. people working with me are used to that. So uh, welcome to the club. So thanks a lot, everyone who wants to know more. We obviously talk more now, but also on Saturday, we have then everything set up for you so that you can actually try and test. And I know you have another colleague here, uh, right? You have another colleague here that uh, uh, nice lady, is she not with you? Maybe. Oh yeah, so uh, yeah. Don't forget the woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, I have a lot of colleagues who are here today. <clears throat> uh, but but why? Sorry. Because we have so many men, and sometimes nice uh, yeah. highlight. Please. Also, those Hi who are Hi maybe. Yes. Yeah. So I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, Hayat yeah. um, has been working with us. She's mainly managing the uh, anything that has to do with artist relations. So right. Hayat, actually, sometimes a lot of people uh, who are familiar with Viva, you know, the channel Viva, are, when they see her, they recognize her because she used to interview all the artists back in the days with Viva. So she's been dealing with a lot of, uh, she, she's really good when it comes to uh, booking artists and dealing with them. So together we've worked on a lot of projects with artists and she's on board helping us also build direct relationship with these artists and bringing them on board to support. Right, because one of one of the challenges obviously is to have the artists so that when you have users also they, they have the music, right? Yes. So Jan, Definity Blockchain, you started talking about it. So it's, uh, we heard Dan this morning developing the next Web 3.0 which we also discussed, he has his own definition from some others, but it doesn't really matter with web, in my view. Uh, in my view, it matters more what it means. And Ralph also challenged Dan, so what does it mean for, in terms of user experience? If you can nail it down in three big bullets, everything here is unscripted, by the way, so uh, not prepared, but we had a nice tea, so you forgive me. 
Sure. So I guess the, the first bullet is, of course, obviously in, in 10 years time or maybe five years, five years time, all of Web3 will be on the internet computer. But it takes a few steps towards there, right? I guess uh, we will see hybrid worlds that where, where some things are on blockchain, some things are not. But uh, our goal here at the foundation is really to, to make sure everything can be on chain. So, so that, I mean, as I said before, really like a browser is all you need in, in order to get into Web3. Everything running on chain on a decentralized system so that really like Web3 in some sense means uh, you own whatever, uh, you know, like uh, Web1 was uh, you read, Web2 was Wikipedia, you, you sort of contribute. Web3 is like jointly owned, community owned, owned stuff like metaverse or songs and all, all of these things, right? I mean, the people upload, there's no intermediary. In order for that to make make it happen, really, you need a platform that's open, that's also jointly owned, right? So like the whole stack needs to be decentralized, jointly owned, right? And it's like that's, to me, like the end goal of, of Web3. And of course, uh, you take steps towards there. Maybe you have to, your first, I mean, initially when Web3 started out, it was like tokens, NFTs. Now it's evolving into games and all of that. Uh, again, maybe people have games where they have some NFTs in the game, but then eventually it will be all like on-chain, uh, fully decentralized, fully community-owned. Yeah, we have, uh, I think, several people who would strongly support it. Jamie Berkey, Outlier Venture, some of you might know, one of the biggest investors. Uh, they really, really promote what is called the open metaverse, so with total decentralization, which is not yet there. I'm also a member of the world uh, Metaverse Council, even though you shouldn't use that word, Metaverse anymore, a Apple has uh, avoided this. We talked about it before. Uh, so, some of you might know how many VR headsets have been sold. Any idea so far? Yes. Wow, yeah, we have an expert here, really. Uh, so that's good in one sense, but that's obviously nothing. But with any exponential technology, we see that. Uh, so let's also hope that Apple will be still very heavy and will be expensive. But we remember the smartphone when it started, or even the satellite phone, Everyone, everything was heavy and expensive. So uh, not finally, but our other highlight, you are from Zurich. Uh, or Zook, I don't know, Christian? Yeah, both. <laughs> both. Okay, so you're with Inacta. Inacta does a lot of metaverse build. We have talked about it before. Uh, you have done Smiley, or the agency I'm working with has done Sanitas, so very, very traditional ones. We were like the first. You were the first, but this is a, this is not, not really because it's a health insurer, Sanitas. Yeah, and it yeah. doesn't matter. I love to have a lot of people. You are not competition. We are not competition. There is no competition in Web3 because the market is very, very young. Still, and I yeah. think we should all work together to crack this market, who's, which is just huge. So Christian, you were talking about, which name cannot be disclosed. Uh, you have a very, very, very 100-year-old plus traditional player uh, in Switzerland. And they came to you and what did they want? Yeah, well, we're, we're engaging with this with this client working right now, talking about metaverse and gaming. They they basically want to have th this kind of engagement. So we're talking about linking physical things with, with the digital world and, and engaging with the users, the collectors. And they, they came to us, okay, can we do this, you know, digital engagement platform, digital items, but also add gaming, the gamification aspects. And this is where... Uh, my uh, let's say old old gamer from 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 the beginning. So some so, some might wonder what, what does an old guy talk about the future and gaming. I mean, I'm a digital immigrant. So, but early eight, 1980s, I was you know playing these kind of games that he just showed. Now they're really coming back because they're vintage, they're cool. But actually, uh, in the early days, those were the games. There was nothing else. So, but who the in the is, audience plays game? So I used, to, I used to play, it. yeah, I used to play a lot of games and a lot um, of people actually, and maybe some who are on the mobile already play your game. Can't. Yeah, exactly. because in, in in November. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Half World will be only released in November. Yeah. So just to uh, yeah. remind you, so, this yeah. is very very new, and you got a sneak pre preview today on yeah. Saturday. Uh, actually, no. we're really excited to show you uh, what we have on Saturday. We did the uh, recreation of uh, the Five Hotel. Saturday is the event on yes, the, yes, the yes. unconference yeah. of the so series. That's a bit prepared. 
<laughs> yeah, and you can try VR headsets because Roger is here. He's working with me at the Metaverse Academy. Not supposed to be on the phone uh, right now, uh, but we have VR headsets for you. So the most awful thing you think, but as you described it, you see it and you're like, wow. Yeah. And then you think about what experience do you have? And I think the experience is the most important. Christian, coming back so to our back. super, super, super. So basically, uh, yeah, this client wants to integrate gaming, this kind of small uh, um the guy with the galaxy collapsing um omar, omar no uh, he presented he said he said these games are used very quickly so like 30 seconds waiting for the bus or so so this kind of engagement is coming back and they want to integrate this in their products for you know engaging people maybe the new generation how many the older users ones. you think generally or how many people use the traditional player we can't name in switzerland yeah, it's it's yeah, it's tricky. It's difficult to say. That, that, but that is the point. It's it's kind of an older kind of product that they want to bring into the into I, the I tell you, everyone is using it. We have nine million people. Yeah, and really, I, everyone is using it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. We, we I mean, you can. Yeah, yeah. Who is that? The, but the you point must is, find the it, point is, adding this element of engagement of, um, I, I don't like the term casual. Someone someone said so casual gaming. I don't like that term because. It's it's recurring, so it's it's not casual. It's it's recurring because you come to the game, you have a you have a high score, and then you want to be more. You want to beat the the guy next the to you, leaderboard. Means, so it's it's maybe means lazy. You know, yeah, if you have free time. Not even lazy. If you look at the people, how you know they they are really attached uh -huh. to these things. But that's yeah. why we need to find a term. Yeah. But the but that is but that is exactly where we're heading. So people, women, and male. So both. It's not only the young guys who, who who play games. It's it's everyone, young and old, engaging through gaming, through quick, nice, interesting, engaging games, and also adding a, an element of challenging, of you know, competition, reward, and all these kind of elements that keep people returning. And this is something that we see. We stand to the on 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 the interface. If you want, we have the. The B to B to B to C to C, we're sort of like, so we are as an organization, like the B to B to C kind of interface, right? So somewhere in the middle. And and, and that's my job. So I try to bring this new technology, the cool technologies, the platforms, the ideas, and bring them to these more, let's say, traditional Beautiful. or created. Uh, so like, any gamer who's just developing and needs support can come for basically the A to Z, we called it before, the internet computer, um, internet blockchain computer, but blockchain is only part of it, and can come to you to get a showcase or can come to you to pull it all together. That's, That's exactly right. So we have, the, we have a dream team here. And if you want to try and test and fail with me, you can come to me. Uh, so I'm also doing this kind of stuff and I just love it. And when you come to AI, obviously that's are uh, totally related to it. People say maybe metaverse is, is down. It's not down because AI actually empowers it, as you all know here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Questions to this There's wonderful. There's actually a lot of teams around here that, that actually building games in metaverse because this week we in Divinity we have like the metaverse and gaming uh, lab where people meet and uh, exchange uh, of gaming. Thank so. You. Just uh, look look around. Uh, probably every second uh, person is actually developing games on the internet computer, so you can uh, have a lot of ex expertise, really, really hands-on things. How these yes. things can go, and really some impressive things uh, happening. Yeah, please uh, do this here. Do the networking. That's what you're here for. But I give you the opportunity. I think we are done. We are done in time. Whatever she's like. Hmm. I have no <laughs> clue where we are on time, but I. Thanks, first of all, but before we close it, questions, please. Any questions you have to this dream team here in front of you? I have a question. You have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, uh, earlier, when you were talking about uh, decentralization and the space and everything and how people are able to manage their data, um, what kind of uh, technology or implementation you're doing with an internet computer? I mean, I I'm, I'm, I'm more into the business side. Obviously, you guys are more tech, but uh, I'm a bit um, passionate about self-sovereign identity, for instance, and what it could really bring to users. Is that is that actually what you're implementing or something different? 
Well, th th I think that, that that's a big part of it, right? I mean, like, yeah. of, of course, uh, as a platform, you want to have like some identity yeah. thing, but it, it goes further, right? You want, want also want to have control over your data. Yeah. And self sovereign really means that you, you control your data, you're, yeah. you're in charge of that. And I think also here, like, uh, it's a bit, bit of a different topic, but uh, like on, on the internet computer, actually, if, if you have an open platform yeah. where I mean, it sort of brings back some thinking that people had like early on when Facebook and all of that started. Oh, let's build a social set network yeah, where yeah, everybody yeah. runs their own computer and you have your data on your own computer and then this can be tracked. But of course, people didn't do that because that was way too tedious. Now with the internet computer, you can actually do that because yeah. the computer is the network and you can own yeah, it's your peer own. To peer. It's peer to peer. Well, yeah. you, I guess people on, like you. on top of it is, is you can have like your own smart contract that has all your data, yeah. right? You can own like your your own contract with your data, and then that can connect to, to all the other smart contracts. You could do do like a any application, right? Your your player could be your smart contract yeah. that plays with another player that's their own smart contract. If you decide to leave the game, you just remove your smart contract, and all your data goes with you, right? So yeah, that's. I guess only possible if you have such a decentralized platform where you can actually like have a very fine control over different pieces of software, different pieces of data. We see and you love it. We yeah. see it. I can, no, no, but now, amazing. Can you write some formulas? <laughs> exactly. You know, he's like, uh, he has been working yeah. for IBM. Can I just before. say one? So one, one he thing. is the person you want to talk to when it, may I say Everyone it. wants yeah. to talk to you. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Hecky is not a nice word, but when it comes to more technical, and Steve Jobs always said, you first start with the experience and then you go to technology. But nevertheless, people should also bear in mind what the technology is like and check it out. Christian, you wanted to jump yeah, in. Because I saw I that you were like- Yeah, no, because mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm postulating, like, like we did before with, with Candy Crush, my, um, uh, empirical evidence of commuting some days was that most players of Candy Crush are women. And we actually found the actual statistic that demonstrates that. So my thesis right now that came to my mind, like, hey, we, as he was speaking, talking about Facebook, my hypothesis is that Facebook exploded because Facebook, what well, it's a closed system and it's bad and everything, but Technically, they had a very open system. They had open APIs where you can you could tap into. But you know, Facebook is dead. Right? And the right? point, yeah, I'm I'm an older guy, yeah, so. You know. <laughs> but the point is, I'm making is, my my hypothesis is that Facebook exploded with Farmville, with the game, actually. Sure. Right. Yeah. Because the those millions of people, beside sharing uh, vacation pictures, they started playing with Farmville, and, and and then sort of snowballed from from there. And, and the internet computer is now obviously Facebook 2.0, much better, much more secure. Yeah, it's a, much it's nicer. a good point there, right? Because now Facebook killed Formwheel but just by changing, like closing their APIs, whereas for no yeah, platform like the internet computer, actually, that's not possible. No one can, can just can, there, right? Yeah, I mean, right. jointly owned uh, a community platform like Facebook on the internet computer wouldn't do that, right? And so that's much more better. It's like the early days of the internet where everything was flourishing people yeah, exactly. were like helping each other it was not the analytic design that, that facebook had so a very heated fireside chat because it's so hot here and i find it incredible you still have your jacket on yeah. <laughs> but you know, maybe it's, it's i like it hot <laughs> yeah yeah my husband would say always keep the jacket on but i think in this kind of environment you are welcome to also take it off maybe uh just uh so thanks a lot um for being with us in this heat in the fireside chat just to have maybe three points one facebook is dead two gaming is probably <laughs> the gateway to the metaverse and three we are all gamers there are three billion gamers and these are not only kids so we love it thanks a lot and see you soon